Hello everyone, I'm Chris Mozillo, Shorts Shortson, and this is a video all about fashion and video games. Fashion. It's all something we have to deal with regularly in our day-to-day -day lives, mostly because it's generally accepted that if you want to go outside, you do have to wear actual clothing and not just walk around fully nude. And in my long years of existing, I'd like to think that I've managed to build up some level of uh, fashion expertise. Fashion. Okay, well, either way, I think there's something oddly fascinating about video game fashion, and by that, I don't mean the latest outfit designs from your favorite JRPG. Oh boy. Instead, I'm talking about video games that provide you a whole variety of different outfits to boost your stats and abilities, but all too rapidly turns into some form of digital dress up as you try and, well, match your socks and your sandals. Don't wear socks and sandals, that it, it's not fashion. Have you ever used your clothing to establish your own identity? No, not like that. Instead, I'm talking about setting yourself against the crowd and carving a look that's entirely your own, so you no longer look like everyone else. Well, that's something that often happens in MMOs. It can be hard being the hero in an MMO, mostly because it entails just dealing with every single small niggling issue that every single person has. And most of these tend to revolve around collecting bear asses, but also because you're surrounded by thousands of other heroes all trying to collect the same bear asses. And normally they're dressed the exact same as you, which is just a classic fashion faux pas as well as a complete disdain for bears. Your average MMO expects you to spend several thousand hours of your fleeting mortal life playing this singular game, which is impossible when Solitaire already exists. Or Klondike, if you're weird. To partake in such levels of labour without a modicum of personality is a pleasure we reserve normally for our employment in our adult lives. <laughs> Which is why, while questing out, the average MMO player may often find themselves sidelined down an even more dire quest. The quest for fashion. These quests can breathe life into often neglected areas, as in the MMO world, it's all about min-maxing your time to the grind. But through area-exclusive armor, players finally have a reason to return to areas once lost. All these unique skins from dungeons can help you build an outfit that's entirely your own. Except for that one, as it looks terrible. And this can rapidly become the sole reason for play, as you no longer look like you've attended a games convention dressed up as Link. When I used to play Guild Wars 2, my playtime often descended into seeking out new outfits for my characters and slowly getting all the pieces for them. This progressed to the point where if the latest event would have had some nice looking armor, I'd end up creating an entirely new character, purely to have someone wear it with a die combination I thought looked good. Like some kind of living mannequin. Due to the nature of MMOs being much like a second life, having a unique look and identity can rapidly become rather important as you might be walking down a street and recognise someone's unique cool look from a previous event or maybe you spot someone and just want to compliment them on their sweet sweet style. Rapidly the game becomes more about trying to create this unique style of fashion than actually playing the game itself. But you know what does involve? playing the game itself and using fashion? Bloodborne. Segway. In Bloodborne you partake in The Hunt, which I can only assume means the hunt for the latest deals and hot fashion, as if a new Primark has just opened on Oxford Street. Oh. Well, it's not really all too dissimilar. Fashion Souls is a thing, it's where players feverishly seek new styles and looks out of existing armour sets within the game. Bloodborne isn't quite filled with the big chunky armour that may be found in its soul brothers, but they are filled with enough belts and leather to make a Square Enix character designer sweat profusely. There's always a surge of excitement when you inspect a dead body and find an entirely new outfit. You know, just a whole outfit. Found. Not only will this latest outfit look beyond stylish, 
but the stat bonuses they provide are geared towards a specific area that may help against various unimaginable horrors. This one's good against poison. This one's good against stabbing. Maybe this one is good against blood. And it's not just one outfit for each element of protection. There's a whole wardrobe of options depending on how you feel. Creepy wizard. Old lady. A, a knight. A more regal knight. Ball Gascoigne. Apparently. Outfits become so vital to your strategy in hunting your prey that not only do you um and ah over what outfit to wear for your own look, but also in ways that have definable effects on your defense and how you play. There ends up being so much to work with that you can make a whole host of designs, such as attending Yarn and Comic Con dressed in your finest Pyramid Head cosplay. Before each boss you'll find yourself sitting down deciding what protections you need and then to follow up with which outfit to wear of the many that benefit you. Except for me as I'm apparently the greatest player of Bloodborne. A similar link between fashion and gameplay can be found in Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Generally Link's eye for fashion was more so based around palette swaps of his normal green tunic with a red one which somehow meant he could survive boiling hot lava conditions and a blue one which somehow prevented him from drowning. But with Breath of the Wild a whole new plethora of outfits were to be acquired as well as the greatest one of all, nakedness. Before you know it you're on a quest to track down the greatest outfit that this Hylian can fit his skinny butt into. It's not like you've got anything more important to do anyway. Oh. Other than finding a new hot look to appease Prince Sidon, your outfits also provide a number of useful quirks to aid you on your quest. Link can put on a thick woolly jumper to help him through the particularly cold regions. Oh, yeah. And instead of a simple flame retardant red tunic, You've now got solid metal armour, because metal's well known for being an insulator against heat and not searing to your flesh. Sure, these outfits have their uses within the game itself, providing various benefits for your journey, such as ladies' clothing that you can sneak into a city with. It does all too rapidly boil down to finding the look that best suits you. There's a feverish excitement that comes from acquiring a full outfit, and normally it's because what you've done to acquire it was nothing to sniff at. Uh. You can find yourself travelling to the ends of the earth, all for the sake of some new shorts, or going on a grand adventure up a mountain for a hat, or you'll just pay whole buckets of rupees to buy some new shoes. <gasps> Turns out that the real adventure were the outfits we made along the way. Those residing in the castle as well. The appointed knight gravely won. Oh, but hey, what about a game where the entire reason you wake up in the morning is that glorious fashion? <laughs> I'd love to see such a sort of example. So Monster Hunter may not seem like the game in which you set out on a journey to acquire your Sunday best, and instead more like a game that is primarily based around fighting increasingly larger monsters in deadly deadly combat. But you'd be wrong. S sort of. Yes, sure, a game called Monster Hunter has something to do with hunting monsters, but man will your life almost immediately be consumed by the workshop and everything it holds dear. For every giant beast you slay, there'll be a new outfit that coincides with it. Sure, it's nice to progress along the food chain taking down each foe, but eventually you'll find that you'll need to upgrade your armour and weapons unless you want to find yourself firmly planted on your butt 
against this fluffy bat. This does raise the question though, do you go for the look that provides the best defensive against a specific monster, or do you go for the one with the snazziest look? Obviously it's the one with the snazziest look. Have you been paying any attention to this video? The thing is though, that one dead dinosaur does not an outfit make. If you want to make that fluffy hat, you're going to have to kill a lot more big fluffy balloon bats. A lot more. A whole lot more. Suddenly your change of wardrobe has turned into a mass extinction event, and once you've got your hands on the latest winter trends, the only logical step is to find the next hot look to carve onto your flesh. Maybe that new look you've got your eye on comes from a particularly tough monster, so maybe you think you'll need a weapon and armor that's good against it. But to get those, you'll need to quicken the death machine a little bit, so that involves making other weapons to kill those. Before you know it, you're falling down a never-ending spiral of bloody fashion, perusing the catalogue of new and exciting looks and ordering yourself a slice of that pie. Except the pie isn't pie, it's the hide of a big monster that you've personally carved from its butt. Or captured. For... Research. Monster Hunter's fashion fixation becomes the major driving force of the entire game. It's the bread in, a, in the bread and butter sandwich that is Monster Hunter. As well as, you know, just the, the, the lust for blood as you find new sparks of life and see how to just end them. Although, another area of fashion to explore is that of cat. Cat fashion. Because why not? That's right, not only do you find yourself seeking out the hottest looks for your own body, but your cat even enters the world of dress-up with a variety of outrageous outfits that can both help cement your own look, or are just downright ludicrous. Once again, there are specific bonuses to be gained for each outfit, but all too rapidly you'll just decide on a specific look for your feline friend, and force them to dress as some weird spaceship. Monster Hunter's focus on acquiring new outfits really drives the gameplay, almost to a, the point of an addiction, and you end up just having to acquire this, this new look or this new weapon, and heck, even if it means killing a giant enemy dragon repeatedly. Sure, it means having to go to bed with the blood of a thousand dragons on your hands, but I'm sure you'll get used to it. And that's kind of it for fashion in video games. We've seen many ways now in which fashion is incorporated into video games and have various different effects, such as in some games where it's used as a means of setting yourself out against the crowd to create a unique look for yourself, or how each unique outfit has some own unique mechanical means and way of affecting the game, or possibly even just where fashion is the major driving force for engaging within the game itself and getting lost within the world upon it. Needless to say, there's something quite enjoyable and wondrous about when a game presents you with many ways of customising your character and your look, and presenting you with hundreds of unique outfits for you to get yourself lost into. Now if only I just had any form of fashion sense. <laughs> <laughs>